And then things shifted in that the verbiage then became perception management. If you Google image consultants, there was a lot going on about what we call perception management. And that's still kind of what you're doing. What you're trying to do by your brand and your image is to manage people's perceptions of you. Yes. Uh, let's say today I came in here with a t-shirt with a stain on it and I had no makeup on and my hair was kind of messy. Um, you'd have a whole different perception of me, right? For sure you would. I hope I would think so anyways, <laughs> compared to how Julie and I are dressed today. But what happened then from there, we moved into the brand and having a brand. So your brand is very, very important. And I always say, if you don't establish your brand, others will. So even if you don't come up with your brand and it's not just about dress, which I'll explain in a minute, others will brand you anyways. So either way, you're gonna be branded. Why not be proactive in what you want your brand to project? And your brand comes through in your outer image. It also comes through in your language, your verbiage, how you are, are you are, do you articulate? Sorry, as I trip all over that one. <laughs> are you articulate? That's what I'm trying to say. Um, <laughs> it has to do with part of your brand could be your attitude. You know, always positive, always upbeat. Brand could be that you're a very calm person. But especially, you know, thinking about that, that outer brand, what do we want it to be? So what I like to think about is corporations and organizations are very much concerned about what their brand communicates. And they will spend thousands and thousands of dollars um, on branding. So if you think about your organization, your company, I want you to think about their logo, okay? And they probably spent a lot of time determining what that logo was going to look like. What did they want it to communicate actually, to project? Then based on that, maybe picking the, the font style, the images that they would use, colors, of course. You know, we've got red in ours. That's because I like bold and be looking or portraying empowerment and um, energy is what I like. Uh, when I first started my company, at that time, the corporate colors, the very popular corporate colors were deep purples and olives, which projected very much, you know, conservative, professional, that type of thing. Um, so thinking about your brand, what is it you want to project and then determining how you're going to project it through your outer image, even your office space. OK, that's really that's a part of you. That's a part of your brand. If your workspace is all messy and papers are all over, your brand is like you don't know what you're doing. You don't have it together. Or if you've got all kinds of cutesy stuff all over your desk, which I have seen. I have been on site for many, many years. I go have gone on site. I've seen all kinds of workspaces. Or does your workspace communicate polished, professional on top of things? organized, thoughtful. So I don't know why I got off onto that section, but that is a part of it. And I think most people don't realize their workspace is a part of your brand and it definitely communicates something about you to others. So I know Julie has a lot of great information on this. I'm gonna turn it over to Julie. Okay, um, so let's see. My big thing around brand is this is the one thing that you can start working on today. You do not need anybody's permission. You do not have to wait for the training budget to open up. You don't need your executive's approval or the admin next to you's approval. This is something you own and you can start working on today. It will impact you both personally and professionally. So your brand is important. Pay attention. Give it time. Be authentic, be consistent, and be intentional. Um, 
get feedback and listen. If you don't know where to begin, ask people. I, I was once advised and believe it firmly, every person needs a truth sayer in your life. A person who's going to give it to you straight, not tell you what you want to hear, but tell you what you need to hear. Go to your truth sayer and ask them, what do you think of my brand? Is there something I should work on? Again, be intentional about it and then be authentic. Don't morph into what you think people want you to believe because you won't be able to maintain it. You want to be authentic. You want to be consistent. You have to keep your audience in mind. Um, oftentimes when we teach this class, we go down the conversation path, the rabbit hole about tattoos, piercing, hair color, nail color. It's more than that. Remember who your audience is and what kind of impact do you want to communicate and be careful. Cognitively choose. Are you putting self-expression over self-perception? And the choice is yours to make. And if self-expression is more important to you, if that's what you value, that's fine. Be one with that. Be comfortable with that and understand that it may align perfectly with your audience or it may not. You have to, again, be cognitive in how you choose to manage your brand perception. Get feedback, listen, think about self-expression over self-perception, and then go beyond image. It's so much deeper than image. It starts with image. You can have a door shut right away. May not be fair, but we all do it. And that's how business works because we're moving at the speed of light. Um, I was guilty of it. We're all guilty of it. Joan referenced a stain on a shirt. I interviewed and did not hire someone once upon a time because she came into her interview with a Mickey Mouse pin on. No problem. Everybody loves the mouse. OK. Until I realized the Mickey Mouse pin was hiding a stain and a tear that I had issue with. So, you know, yeah, you have to get through that image first, but then it goes deeper. It's how you stand. It's how you present. It's how you project. It's the words you choose, the confidence that you show. What about your reputation, your credibility? What do other people say about you? All of that is layered into your brand. And as Joan started talking about this, you know, we're just modeling this after what happens in the consumer world. The consumer world is constantly asking for customer feedback. That's a very powerful tool that you too can use. Get your customer feedback. See what they think. What experience did they have with you? And then you can build on that or you can remove something. But again, it's all around getting that feedback and listening. Yeah.